Okay, let's move on to the other big storyline this week as it relates to the Iowa-Penn State game. We heard fans booing as Penn State players went down on the field with injuries. All right, now, I say injuries because obviously there was a question of whether these injuries were legit. These were not just Iowa fans questioning this. We saw LeVar Woods. If you didn't see that video, you can Google it. I believe WHO Channel 13 um, uploaded uh, some footage of LeVar Woods on the sideline after number 17. Let me grab the name of number 17, Arnold um, Ibikiti. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. The defensive end for Penn State. After he went down, LeVar Woods on the sideline with a nice little acting job, falling to the ground, kind of demonstrating what he just saw number 17, and I think several others, if we had a chance to ask LeVar Woods, and he was honest, several other Penn State guys with a similar um, type of routine after Iowa um, had a big play in that game. So it wasn't just Iowa fans, it was the Iowa coaching staff that noticed it. Now, everybody wants to dog on Kirk Ferentz nationally. Oh, Kirk, you know, lost some, I've seen some people this week, I lost a lot of respect for Kirk Ferentz when he said this. We heard the same we, we heard the same narrative last year after the offseason issues, people losing respect for Kirk Ferentz. We heard the same this week, people losing respect for Kirk Ferentz. Um, you know, we saw we heard it a little bit last year after they after Kirk called three timeouts late in late in the game against Minnesota when they had the game in the bag. Listen, you lock, lost respect for Kirk Ferentz. Just move along. Because there's plenty of other people that really do respect Kirk Ferentz, and I'm one of those guys. So move along. If you lost respect for Kirk Ferentz, I don't think he wants your respect in the first place. So I'll say that. Second thing, he was asked, Chad Lice to go to the Des Moines Register, asked him about the claim, I guess, by some, and, and certainly the fan reaction to Penn State getting hurt, guys getting hurt. And all Kirk Ferentz said is the fans thought they smelled a rat. Okay? And then that gets blown way out of proportion um, that he was accusing Penn State of, I don't think Penn, I don't think Kirk ever outwardly said, I know he never outwardly said that Penn State was faking injuries. Now, if you are defensive as a Penn State fan or a coaching, or we can talk about James Franklin in a second, or as a staff member, maybe that tells you something in just the fact that you're defensive. But Kirk Ferentz never alleged that. Um, but he is sticking up for his fan base, and I think rightfully so. Now, the fans, I've talked about my issues with booing. Um, it seems like there's a little bit more booing this year. I heard somebody commented on one of our videos that perhaps it's because of Iowa serving alcohol at its games. There was plenty of alcohol. I mean, we all know the BAC levels across Kinnick Stadium is higher than the average, uh, you know, the average individual in Iowa on a Saturday. Uh, so, you know, I, I think maybe there's something to be, to be said for that. Maybe there's a little bit more alcohol going around. But look, I mean, people are drinking before, during, and after the games anyways. So maybe that has something to do with the increase in booing. I know James Franklin mentioned Iowa fans booing the the football uh, falling off the tee at the beginning of the game, and and I think at a different point in the game it happened as well because of the wind. I think fa- I mean look, I get it. I mean I don't think there's any reason to boo something like that. Fans are are eager and they're anxious. They want to see football when it continues to happen. I think the boos were prim- primarily not to defend the fans that were booing when the football blew off the tee, but I think when that happened, the fans were booing the referees not immediately sending another player over to hold the football. You know, I think there's this rule where it's got to blow over twice, which seems to be a stupid rule. If you know that the wind is blowing, it's done it once. Why do we got to do it again? Continue to draw this thing out. But that's a different discussion. But I want to address what James Franklin brought up during his press conference this week. Because, of course, Kirk addressed the media Tuesday. Franklin comes out against the uh, against Iowa on Wednesday. And one of the things that... Uh, James Franklin did. Well, first of all, he had a five-minute speech on this subject. Uh, He was asked about it, which he knew he was going to be asked about it. He brings out out a sheet of notes, and he starts reading off these notes about every reason why Iowa's logic about the the allegations that Penn State players were faking injuries, why that narrative or those allegations is false. And one of the reasons he brought up why it's obvious they'd be false is because Iowa doesn't run tempo. So why would Penn State want to fake injuries and slow the game down? I guess I guess James Franklin thinks every Iowa fan and every college football fan is just stupid, okay? Because the idea that faking an injury only affects teams that play up-tempo or no huddle. He actually used the term huddle, right? Iowa's a huddle team. So the idea that that uh, that only affects teams that are no huddle teams is ridiculous. 
Uh, anybody with a, a brain, anybody who knows college football, Don Patterson is an excellent resource. We have him on our post game shows each and every Saturday over to Iowa with the Boys of College Football. Anybody that understands football knows that when you knock off a 10 yard run, especially in a game where you struggle to get yardage consistently, or you knock off an 18 yard pass play, the rhythm that's associated with that, especially for the, the back and the line, uh, is tremendous. And so let, let me read you some statistics, and I want to give Coach Don Patterson a shout-out on this because he's the one who went back and did this research on each and every one of these Penn State injuries. Now, we're not claiming that we're not claiming that uh, every Penn State injury was fake, and I'm not even specifically claiming that any specifically were fake. I want to give you the evidence, though, and you can make the judgment for, for yourself. First of all, five of the six injury timeouts for Penn State were on defense. All right, Clifford's injury did not... Um, did not include an injury timeout. Okay, so there was no injury timeout associated with Clifford. I believe Penn State's tailback went down. We're not even going to talk about that one. I don't think there's any reason to think that one was fake. I think that one, there's no question it was legit. But five injury timeouts on defense. Now, P.J. Mustafer, that's the one James Franklin kept referring to yesterday as why would we want our, our star defensive lineman to go down. Again, no one's claimed that P.J. Mustafer was faking an injury. P.J. Mustafer apparently is out for the season now. No one ever claimed he was going to uh, that he was faking that injury. Now, put this in perspective: what was the previous play prior to PJ Mustafer going down? It was a negative one yard run for Iowa. A negative one yard run for Iowa. So there's no reason to think that PJ Mustafer was faking injury. Okay, we wish him the best. We hope he recovers and and can play football again soon. Let's move on to number one, Jaquan Brus- uh, Jaquan Brisker. James Franklin brought him up. Why would we want our star safety to come back, go down? Well, let me tell you the previous play prior to Brisker going down. It was a 20-yard run for Iowa. And what happened shortly thereafter? Jaquan Brisker comes back in the game. And it was interesting, James Franklin brought up the fact that Brisker went down twice against Wisconsin, and the fans didn't boo him then. You might be incriminating yourself right there, Franklin. Uh, but Brisker came back shortly. Number 91. Devon Elise goes down. What were the previous two plays? A four-yard run, but that four-yard run was preceded by a 22-yard pass play. Devon Elise goes down, and what do you know? Comes back quickly, and he's back in the game for Penn State. Oh, by the way, that one was Iowa was driving into deep into Penn State. Most of these were actually Iowa driving into Penn State territory. When the injuries, the injuries occurred. Number zero, safety Jonathan Sutherland. He goes down, did not return. That's one that James Franklin brought up. Again, not going to claim anything because not we never, no one's ever claimed that every time there was an injury timeout, it was a, a, a illegitimate injury timeout. Now that one was preceded. Sutherland's injury was preceded by an 11 yard pass play, but Again, he did not return, so had he returned, there could be some susp- suspicion there, right? But we won't even we won't even address that one. How about this one? Arnold, and now I'm going to butcher this name, and I'm not trying to do that. Arnold Ibikiti, number 17, defensive end for Penn State. He goes down after an 18-yard run for Iowa. He quickly comes back into the game. So there you have one, two, three defensive players, each of which went down after some big time offensive plays for Iowa. And you say, well, you know, a 18 yard run and a, a 22 yard pass play and a 20 yard run. Those aren't huge. They are in a Penn State Iowa game. All right. They are for an Iowa offense that doesn't move the ball very much. So it makes sense why Penn State would want to slow things down. Again, I'm not going to say specifically that every single one of these guys wasn't shaking up, or shaking up, or, or cramping. Again, we don't know that, but I think the fact that James Franklin went on a five-minute rant and he prepared notes for this, defending the injury timeouts, defending himself against Kirk Ferentz, as opposed to just saying, "Look, what Kirk said yesterday, I don't agree with. I thought it was a low blow." but I'm moving on. I'm thinking about our bye week. I'm thinking about the health of our team. No, he prepared a five-minute speech to rip Kirk Ferentz 
and the Iowa fan base. And then he went, took the moral high ground and said, I don't think booing this kind of thing is good for college football. Anyways, number 17, uh, we're going to call him Mr. Arnold. Um, hey, Arnold came back in the game quickly. 18 yard run preceded, or excuse me, the 18 yard run preceded the injury. And you see, you see during this game on Fox, the, a couple of trainers for Penn State, they come out. The girl starts working on his right knee. She's rubbing his right knee, and then all of a sudden she starts rubbing his left knee. So either we have some weird uh, masseuse training going on during the game, or there's something weird going on. All right? And what do you know? About two minutes later, Franklin walks out, and as this girl's rubbing one of his knees, uh, Franklin stands there. No words between James Franklin and Arnold. He just stands there with his arms crossed, almost like a, a criminal returning to the scene of the crime. And then what do you know? Number 17 gets up, walks off the field, returns in the game. To, to act like it's not reasonable to act with some suspicion towards this, it's being a bit ignorant, okay? And let's be honest, James Franklin, This it would be totally different if it was Paul Crist or, you know, Trying to think of another really respected coach in the Big Ten. Brett Bielema, even. I think Kirk obviously has a lot of respect for Brett. You know, or probably even Jason Day. Or, uh, Jason Day. I'm, I'm thinking golf. Um, Ryan Day. I mean, I don't, I don't know what Kirk's relationship with Ryan is. You know, mate, you know he is an Urban Meyer uh, former assistant coach, so maybe that's a bad example. But there are coaches across the country that Kirk Ferentz has a lot of respect for. Matt Campbell would probably be one of those. I mean, as much as Iowa, Iowa State fans don't like each other, Matt Campbell, I think I have a lot of respect for Matt Campbell. I don't think he would pull some crap like this. I don't. So this isn't, you know, I, there, there's no vendetta against James Franklin or Penn State. I have a lot of respect for Penn State going into this game. But this just screams, this just screams uh, suspicion to me. Again, can't be conclusive. And nor, nobody should be conclusive. The only people that know would be the coaching staff and these players. So, you know, again, best wishes to Jonathan Sutherland. Don't know his status. Best wishes to P.J. Mustafer. And if the fans booed those injuries, that's that's unfortunate. But you can see why the fans would be suspicious of injuries given what we saw on Saturday. So I hope moving forward fans don't assume that, and I don't think they will. Typically, Iowa fans are good about cheering when a guy gets up after a gruesome injury or any injury for that matter. Um, but it was apparent that these guys were not seriously hurt. Were they hurt at all? That's up for debate, but, uh, I wanted to address that.